Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10 as well as Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word. Lord Jesus, bless your children. Help us to have wisdom and understanding in the things of you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10 nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. All right. And so this is um, conflated today. I'm gonna go ahead and read the conflation scripture. Um, Ephesians chapter five, verse three, but sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as it is improper among saints. So there's a right way and there's a wrong way, right? And if you go about doing that way, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. And so there's much debate about things. And you know what? Only thing we can do is go by the word of God. So it says, nor thieves, if you're out there stealing, stop stealing. Um, it says, nor the greedy. Um, don't have greed in your heart constant desire right um of a fleshly nature constantly in in want of more 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 no and and you know people are not quick to um ascribe to greed they're not quick to say that they are greedy right um you, you have to have four more cups of coffee you have to um keep shopping on amazon for one more thing because this is just the way i purchase things and this is just the way i do things and you don't realize you're doing the same thing over and over. You're caught in a vicious cycle of desire, right? So in order to do that, get out of that cycle, we need to see God. We need to seek the Holy Spirit. Um, drunkards, those who have um, issues with uh, alcohol. And, and one good way to know if you have issues with alcohol is if you know that there's another person who has issues with alcohol and you can't resist drinking around them, knowing that they might fall, that is saying that you might have an issue, right? Because if you can't resist in, in all search situations, right, you should be able to resist it at any point in time. And if you can't in certain situations, then you might need to be careful because you are, you are in a cycle of greed, of, of alcohol, which is drunkenness, right? Um, drunkards, you don't want to be um, walking around intoxicated, not sober. Even when you drink, you should not be getting drunk, right? It's one thing to have a glass of wine or something, but you should not be walking around getting drunk. You, there should at no point where your sobriety should leave you, right? Because that is not of God. Um, it says, nor revilers, um, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. I have the uh, definition for reviler. Hold on. Let me just pull it back up. So the thing that they're calling a reviler is a verbal abuser, a person who verbally abuses one another or uses words against one another as like a weapon, right? If you are out of control in your words, right? Then then that is not something that will inherit the kingdom of God. You that you are not walking in the way of inheritance, right? <clears throat> Nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom. It's one thing to do something and you fall. It's something totally different to continue in that way. That is a person who who practices those types of things, right? It says nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God meaning people who are trying to cheat people out of something or gain the upper hand and, and not in a, a, a positive way, not, not trying to, um, to, to do it in a way that's honest. It says we'll inherit the kingdom of God. So if you are find yourself in any way, shape or form, and that's the thing, you know, these, these things need to be chewed on, right? Because everything is not obvious, the enemy is very tricky, right? And so a thief in your mind may look one way, but then your 
you're going about it only thinking of a thief the way that you think of a thief. And then you never think of the fact that you take from someone every day, right? In the way that you do your sales practices, right? Or 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 something in your life is leaning towards thievery. So you have to be careful as you go through these definitions and truly ask the Holy Spirit to search you for greed, search you for drunkenness, search you for reviling, search you for a swindling spirit, search you for thievery right so that you know truly that hey yes I've allowed God to deal with this inside of me I'm sorry for the background noise you guys um it says but sexual immorality and impurity or covetousness must not be even named among you so sexual immorality I mean so much falls under that you guys I I tried looking that up but in this day and age it's so complex um you know I, I really feel like we should all pray about this because this also talks about the thoughts our thought life our thought patterns and things and and it really it lends to it lends to things that um lead us down those paths of sexual immorality so that could be whether you're married whether you're unmarried whether you are single whether you're looking or not right it, it's about our thought life right because that's where sexual immorality begins and immorality meaning the the loss of the moral nature right the even the 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 thing that gauges and stops us right we if we are walking in that pattern we're walking in that path that's how iniquity sets in right so it's immorality sexual immorality and that includes the things that you look at on tv it's just so many things that could be included in that so make sure you take time to chew on these things and it says and all impurity or covetousness so things that cause us to be defiled right um uh, there are certain things that we do and we think that we're doing them rightfully but it grieves the holy spirit right and you don't want that to stay in your garment you don't want um a certain thought process that you are involved in to stain your garment and cause you to walk in a way that is not of God. It says must not even be named among you. So it, it shouldn't be associated with you. Why? Because that can cause other young Christians to fall. It could cause people to fall away from Christ and it could cause the world to not want to be a part of Christ because things like that are being named among you as is proper among saints right because it causes a stain on 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 just the the bride herself well it's not going to stain the bride but it's going to stain the thought of the church among the people of the world amen so these two are conflated today because they go right together it doesn't there's not much needs to be said about why they go together god put them together and he's saying that you know some people are going to miss the kingdom of heaven um in their inheritance in the kingdom of god because they refuse to look at themselves in this sort of way or analyze their hearts in this way all right let's go ahead and pray thank you father god for this word lord jesus thank you for your blessings and your strength, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us. God, thank you for causing us to walk in ways that are of you through your Holy Spirit. We ask you, God, to just continue to watch over our thoughts. Help us to be conscious of our thoughts, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing that. Be my Lord, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for all of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he's going to show you the way he's going to lead you to that path that leads to eternal life and, and, and prosperity and goodness in your life. 
um, the path and the way that God has created for you. Um, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to a new church home. Well, not a new, but whatever church home he wants you to go to. Um, and he's also going to show you where to go to be baptized and be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. These are things that he does not want us to forsake the fellowshipping of ourselves and being baptized. Um, they are proper. They are right. Um, go out, make disciples of all men and follow Christ. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.